Hello, this is Jordan, and this video is being recorded on December 28th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope everyone had a great Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you why big gold miners underperform and why I don't buy them. And this is an excellent chart from gold.org and Metals Focus. I wanted to give them a shout out. And this is relatively simple if we're just going back over the last about 10 years. And when there is a correction in gold and gold is coming off its highs, the problem for the big miners is that the majority of the time, their costs are rising. And part of that is because gold is, is a leading indicator for inflation. It always moves. It's the first to move. It's the first to sense inflation. And then, you know, by the time inflation comes, uh, you get inflation in mining costs. And so that can hurt the margins of gold producers. And that's what we've been seeing. You can see, look at what happened in Q3 2020. Gold price peaks. Uh, production costs have been rising pretty steadily since that time. I don't know what color the production cost is. Someone tell me in the comments. I'm colorblind. I, I, I can't even guess. Um, I have no idea. But but that aside, so that that's an uh, that's an example. And the same thing happened in 2016. The gold price peaked in Q3, and it's hard to tell what the production cost line. But if you look closely, you can see that. It did make higher highs while gold did not in 2017 and 2018. So the margins came down. So that is an issue uh, for the large producers. And look, we see in, at the end of 2012 and 2013, why we had the crash in the sector, the gold price peaked at 1800, but costs were still rising. I mean, look at margins just getting squeezed in Q1 and Q2 of 2013. You had a collapse because even though the gold price had broken down and crashed, uh, production costs were still going up during that time. So production costs, I mean, they're, for the most part, you know, the inflation, all the money that's being pumped in, I mean, production costs are over time, they're going to be rising. And so when the gold price is correcting, margins are going to get squeezed. And that's why the gold stocks are underperforming during these periods. And, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of history, you know, mostly focus on the last 40 years. And this is monthly data. You know, we have the gold price there. The middle, we have the Barron's Gold Mining Index against the price of gold. And then we have the at the bottom, the Huey against gold. And it's really interesting, uh, you know, 1971 and the gold price being fixed, that skewed uh, the ratio in the 60s and 70s. So I really want to focus on the last 40 years. And even though gold peaked at you know the high 800s, wherever it was in 1980 and 20-year bear market, the gold stocks actually outperformed during that period until the mid-90s. And Two reasons for that. Number one, you had a huge technological advancement. You know, I looked and heat bleaching was first done in 1969, but I think it was really popularized and mainstreamed in the 80s. So that was a huge technological advancement for the industry. And with the collapse of the Soviet Union and communism around the world, not just in that jurisdiction, but that facilitated the opening of a lot more jurisdictions for mining exploration. So that was huge in the 90s. So those were two big reasons why, even though gold was in a bear market, uh, the industry itself did okay. It really didn't have problems until you had the Brex fraud and, uh, you know, and then the gold price falling in the late 90s. And that, you know, 96 to 2000 bear market was much like the 2011 to 2015. But anyway... Coming out of that bear market, the gold price nearly tripled into the peak in May 2006. And 
costs really didn't start to go up until I'd say 2004, 2005. I mean, that's when oil broke out above $40, which is a major breakout. So costs weren't really an issue until the mid 2000s. So, and that's reflected in the Huey gold ratio. You can see how well it did from 01 to the end of 03, but you still got some leverage going into that peak in 2006. But, you know, one, a, a big reason why that uh, gold stocks collapse relative to gold from 08 to 16 is because you had a peak in 2008, you had a peak at 1,000, then gold corrected 30% in the financial crisis. But after the mega bear market, the forever bear market, when gold bottomed around 1050, I mean, the gold price was basically almost flat for an eight-year period. And think about all the money that got pumped in, all the inflation that we had from 08 to 2016. I mean, even though commodities were in a bear market from 2011 to 2016, we know that there was huge inflation. I mean, the asset inflation, you know, inflation in property, stocks, bonds. So it was everything but commodities. And you know, the cost of living was still rising. You know, the cost of mining and running a company was still rising. So, I mean, can you imagine just going eight years given the monetary and fiscal climate that we're in now and the, and the metals price is not going anywhere. I mean, that's, that's going to devastate uh, corporations in that industry. But anyway, so the, the last thing I want to note is the time when gold stocks, large gold stocks really outperform gold. And that's when you're coming off of a major bottom, like 2016 or 2008, you know, to 2000, that's when you get the best bang for your buck. And a big reason is because the gold price senses the inflation first, and so it moves ahead of that. And so, uh, you know, that's possibly something that we could look to in the next couple of years, you know, possibly before another big round of inflation. We see gold breaking out above 2100. And, that, and that's another, the last point I want to make is you will get the most bang for your buck, number one, coming out of a bottom, but number two, after a breakout. So when gold let's just say gold's going to break out and it's going to go to 4,000 in the next three years, my log target gold or the gold stocks outperforming gold in that move from 1800 to 4,000. The vast majority of that is going to be when gold moves from 1800 to 25, 2600, you know, by the time gold is at 3000, 3200, I mean, it's, it's not going to, uh, the gold stocks at that point, you will have gotten the most bang for your buck. And you know, one example of this of this is go back to 2011 with silver. The silver stocks, they peaked before silver had even hit 40. And it still went up to 50 and the silver stocks were not reflecting that. So again, the with the stocks, the best bang for your buck is at the, you know, coming out of a bottom or also during and immediately after a breakout. And so, uh, you know, lo looking at just finally looking at the struggles that large stock, large miners have against the price of gold. I mean, this is why I don't, you know, you can't buy and hold GDX or GDXJ for you know, five years. I mean, if maybe you buy and hold it for a two or three year period, you get really lucky. Uh, but you're going to get more bang for your buck in select juniors and in, in certain select mining stocks. So I hope that was informative. Let me know what you think. Follow all my work here at the YouTube channel and also the dailygold.com. Consider subscribing to my premium newsletter. It looks to me, it, based on my analysis, we could have a major buying opportunity coming in the next couple months. Uh, when the Fed gets ready to hike rates. Thank you so much, and I look forward to doing another video for you guys in the days and weeks ahead.